In 2004, I co-founded The Puzzle Group with Graham Smith, who's a good friend and an art director, designer and writer. And together we were very interested in establishing platforms for um, engaging conversations and communications about designing. Um, I'll talk a, a little bit about a few projects that I've worked on with Graham and others over the past few years. Um, the first one is Conversations of Things New, that was really exploring the relationships between Australian designers and Italian manufacturers, and we were very interested in the design process that happens between those groups, and also, I guess, the collaborations that come out of that. Um, we had an exhibition in Sydney and in Melbourne as part of the State of Design Festival, and we produced um, the exhibition so that we could really explore those um, processes that go into design and the making of design and really engage that with the general public because there's, there is always a bit of a divide and it's always a bit of a mystery in terms of how design comes into being. So we were particularly interested in engaging with the wider community. In 2006, um, no 2008, sorry, um, I collaborated uh, with Ewan McEwen in Melbourne um, on a project called Springboard Entrepreneurship for Designers. And we worked on this project as a way of connecting creative um, design studios with business skills. Um, we sort of acknowledge that it's, it's pretty important that designers have a sustainable business practice. And I guess when you go through design school as I did, you, you don't really learn about running a business. So we, um, we set up Springboard and we ran, over a year and a half, we ran programs of mentorship, um, workshops, and we engaged with the design community, and Leon was one of our mentors, and we also engaged with the business community, um, and we involved um, intellectual property lawyers, we involved um, accountants and business strategy people to really help shape, um, I guess, or, or design businesses for the 100 designers who were part of the program. Um, out of all of that year and a half's work, we, we gathered together our research and we put it onto the Australian Design Unit website so that we could offer all of that information free and accessible for Australian designers and beyond. So now there's, there's design resources in terms of opportunities and grants and events and things that are happening within the community that designers can get involved in. And we also have the business tools and resources on the site. The two projects I wanted to quickly talk about, one is um, the uh, Bunker Roy project in India, which is um, it's an amazing program that was first established in the 70s um, in the desert in Rajasthan. And Bunker Roy decided that he really needed to help um, women particularly to run businesses that they could operate and, and have control of within their own communities. The, um, the program started as an education program and built into what is now called the Barefoot College for Solar Engineers. And it's aimed at women who are mainly illiterate um, and they're taught how to become solar engineers and they spend six months at his campus and then they travel back to their own village um, in India but now also they have women from Africa and also Bhutan. Um, so the two aspects of it, there's the solar panels and then there's the lighting. And the lighting is really amazing because um, in many of the villages where these women come from, they've never had electricity. And it means that they can work at night and it also means the kids can do night school. And a lot of the kids in these villages work looking after animals during the day so they don't have a chance to go to school. And this was the second project. This was in Bangladesh. Um, it was set up by a guy called Mohammed Rezwan who studied architecture, but when, grad when he graduated, he decided he didn't want to build houses for wealthy people in Bangladesh. And he wanted to apply his sort of design thinking to problems in the country. And one of the biggest problems is flooding. And the flooding means that a lot of children in the rainy season can't get to school. Um, so he, he started to think about this and realized that there was this really strong community of boat builders and so he started to work with them 
thinking about you know how he could transform transform the boats into schools. So he's got um, I think over 200 boats in Bangladesh. Some are the, most are schools, some are libraries, and others are now turning into little hospitals. So it means the kids can can stay in education right through the year. Then I think probably in the early 2000s, I don't know if you remember, but there were things starting to come in the paper about climate change and how things were changing and all these things that they said were going to happen in 100 years were suddenly happening not in 50 years and 10 years and happening at a very rapid pace. And I started collecting these clippings of all these things I saw in the paper and bit by bit, the, you know, I was filling up the, all the clippings and before I knew it, I just couldn't keep up because climate change became such a big issue. And um, I guess it's one of those things that you really want to feel that you can do something. I think personally you do things like you look at your own home and your own life and what you can do in your own life and then you look at what you can do you know, in your work and what you can do in your community. It's how you can do things ripple by ripple and do things to, to create greater change. So to me this was um, you know, so important that we're somebody, we have our own company and we have the power to run the company in the way we want to and do things you know, across the board the way that you want to do it in the best way possible. So we went through the business and we looked at the way we did everything and tried to do everything the most, um, you know, we, we um, became carbon neutral and we looked at all our packaging and recycling and everything, um, how we could improve it and how we could do it better. And it had always been something that had been important to us. We'd always done recycling, always choosing paper and less packaging and always been conscious of how we could take it a step further and be even more conscious about it. Um, then in 2006 we did this range called Mother Nature and this was um, something that was taking it further to our customer base because we had a huge database of you know, many thousands of customers and um, this, this was a range that was said, look at all the beautiful things in Mother Nature and be inspired by Mother Nature to, to um, take time to enjoy it and to look after it and um, we put a, you know, a message in our mail out like look at your emissions and what can you do and how can you think about living life in a more sustainable way and it became quite an important um, point that we could really connect with our customers and work together and we had a fantastic um, response from all the customers and they really responded well and wanted to know what they could do to, um, to do things. I guess with, um, with all the things going on with the climate, that thing where you really feel how can you contribute and how can you do something to make a difference. And um, in 2007, um, the Australian Conservation Foundation and Al Gore ran the Climate Project, and Duncan also is a Climate Project ambassador. And how this started, um, you're probably aware of Al Gore and his movie. He studied climate science in the 60s, and he's, um, his teacher saw the carbon emissions going up in front of his eyes. He was one of the people to measure it. And this was something that Al Gore, you know, he, he saw these facts and he wanted to let people know. And he got into government and he was one of the most powerful people in the world. He was trying to show everybody, look what's happening, we've got to stop this happening. And he was in such a powerful position that he still, people still wouldn't listen. So after you know, he, he, got, he got out of government, he decided that the best way to approach it was to start from scratch again. So he started going out and telling his famous slideshow, which they turned the movie into. So he went out person by person delivering the slideshow and he gave the lecture more than 2,000 times. Then they made the movie and they're still getting the word out there. Then he decided he needed to start from the ground again and engage people that could go and connect with their communities to tell the story. So there was 150 of us that were chosen from around Australia from all different aspects. And there was designers and firemen and coal miners and teachers. There was a really broad spectrum of society. And we learned all about climate change and then how we could relate this back to our community. And so I think Coming from the arts community with architecture and design and art, I think we see things in a different way and we, we're very visual people and you want to know what you can do from your uh, particular profession. This is um, Green Rocks, which um, Duncan works with, Dave Rubino at Digital Eskimo, who's another one of the founders. Um, about two years ago, there was um, six of us and we just thought there are so many good things going on in this town, so many people doing great things, but the news is so negative and people don't know what to do. And, how we can get all these great people together and make wonderful things happen. So we decided to have a thing called Green Ups um, once a month just to get all the good people together to share ideas and to uh, make good things happen. So we, um, we started at the Falconer, which is a little bar on Oxford Street, and we invited all our friends and we thought people who might be interested and we set up and 
you know, wanted to see what would happen. And then at 6 o'clock on the night of the opening, there was a queue down Oxford Street. And the night was just hundreds of people came along. And it's just been every every month since, it's just been hundreds of people. So every every month it's different and we get different people. So there's many thousands of people that have come over the two years now. And, and it's really wonderful to see people there, scientists people and business people and arts people and they all get together and all meet each other and everybody's really open and wonderful and really good things happen every month. Another project, um, Heidi and I and another friend, Paula Rogers, started collaborating on in 2009 was the Pacific Island Project and that came from the idea that these cultures just make such beautiful things but a lot of the skills are being lost and um, we're kind of, we're swapping ways and we're, you know, we've seen the madness of our ways that we work hard and then go and relax on an island for two weeks of a year and try and have a holiday and come back to the madness of this rat race and they've got this beautiful tropical island paradise that they want the things that we have and there's this real, um, it's just time that we can really learn from each other and appreciate what we both have from each other. So it's something that we were working on of how we can work with Pacific Island communities and their beautiful skills and their talent and the way that they've lived for thousands of years in a sustainable way and that we might be wealthier but we've completely ruined our environment in so many ways and how we can really learn and share from each other. So that's kind of been going on in the background and then um, earlier this year the opportunity came up for a project with Art and About and we thought it was the perfect opportunity to use this Pacific Island project that we've been working on together and launch it into something that was really about um, broader conversations about happiness in the end that um, it's just bringing people together to make wonderful things happen. So um, our first project we're working on is in, um, this is what our story is about. Happy Talk is really a way of, in many ways, engaging with people through conversation. So we're quite open in how we want to work. Um, this is our first project, which is focusing on the Pacific and really looking at what Leon was just talking about, the Pacific Island project, as the background and the skills and the know-how and the resourcefulness of the Pacific is quite outstanding and incredible and sort of leads us to shame a little bit. Um, so we're very keen to look at Happy Talk as a way of connecting that together with communities here, um, going to the Pacific and actually learning from the Pacific and taking those learnings and looking at how we can collaborate on many interesting and surprising exciting projects. So part of um, the project in Hyde Park will be building um, a pavilion, which we're calling the Happy Talk House, and we're working with an architect um, called Mano, who did a really beautiful pavilion down at Tamarama Beach for Sculptures by the Sea a couple of years ago, um, made out of pallets. So we really wanted to look at how we could we build using found objects and recycled materials, and then everything that we build with will be then given back or shared with the community. Um, so the structure itself will be pallets, so timber, and then we're going to wrap it with this really beautiful, colourful um, top ball and using a technique that's developed by the Cook Island communities called Tivaiva, which is an embroidery technique. So we want it to have a very sort of strong, beautiful floral kind of presence um, on the corner of, it's on the corner of, um, it's in Hyde Park, north opposite Cook and Phillip Park, so it's in the garden. So if any of you would like to come and join in the workshops, we'd love to have you joining. We've got a Facebook page where you can get all the latest details and come and volunteer if you'd like to come and help with people. And we'd love to really engage as many people as we can. And we want to work with um, different art galleries. And um, the museum has the biggest um, South Pacific um, collection pretty much in the world. And it's all hidden away in how we can discover all these treasures that we have in our community and link it all together and find what's there. <coughs>